greetings everyone, Daniel Lowry back again from Anti-Siphon Training with your last installment of your notes and documentation series. Today we are going to be talking about reference libraries because I'm sure that you have been note-taking like a beast. You notated how to make your toaster work. You took uh, notes and made a document on a walkthrough on how your vacuum cleaner performs. Who knows? You guys have gone crazy. I might be over-exaggerating. I feel like though that... You're not, that you're going crazy on this. And my heart swells to know that I have in some way, hopefully, helped you out to understand the importance of good notes and good documentation. Now that that has been said, and we're kind of beyond that, we're now at that whole reference library thing. We have all these notes. We have all this documentation. What are we doing with it? Where is it going? And are there other types of things that we can put in there? Maybe not technically what something you might refer to as notes, we might have another name that it goes by. So let's talk about that, right? So a reference library is going to basically be a repository of any useful information to your field, to your whatever you're working on. So cybersecurity guy, I love cybersecurity. I've got all sorts of notes that I've taken throughout the years and that walkthroughs I've created, sheet sheets that I've created, glossary of terms that I've created, code snippets that I've grabbed, tool commands, examples, uh, quick reference guides, so many different things. This is what is great and useful about a reference library. I can now start to organize that stuff, put it on a shelf in a way that makes sense so that not only can I go and grab that stuff, and others can use it as well. And it becomes very useful. There are different ways in which you could do this. You could put them on the internet using something like GitHub or Gitbook. You could use cloud storage. You could use SharePoint if you're working internally on stuff that's only for your organization. It's another way to go about it. There's tons of different ways in which you could store and maintain and curate. You just got to pick the right one and use it. Okay. So that said, there's a couple of things like I had mentioned before that might be useful to us. A couple of, I'll call them techniques for lack of a better term. It's going to be things like cheat sheets. I mentioned glossaries and code snippets. Um, these are other things that might go in a reference library along with all your other documents. So I did want to take a few seconds here and just kind of go over what we're talking about when we say things like a cheat sheet. So what does a cheat sheet mean? So a cheat sheet is going to be like, I, I don't need great detail. I just need to know how to very quickly do the thing. I can never remember how do I, you know, do this in Python? What is that tool? How do, how do I do this in curl again? Yeah, I can go read the man page, but a cheat sheet, kind of very little detail, almost just examples with maybe a, a sentence or two of detail to just get you straight to the point. This is what you do. Add very little words and verbiage. It's more of here's an example of what you're looking for. That's going to be a cheat sheet. Let's jump in here. I've got a glossary. We're going to look at that in a second. But I got this Python quick referenced uh, that I made up. It's basically a cheat sheet. And this kind of serves two purposes. It, it's code snippets as well as a cheat sheet on how to do things. So if I want to do file manipulation in Python and I can never remember how to read a file line by line in Python for whatever reason, I can come straight here to my little my little quick reference and see with open example.txt. Oh, gotcha. You'll notice there's very little by means of detail, right? But there's a great example there that gives me all the meat and potatoes that I need to be able to do that functionally with inside of a Python script that I'm writing, right? I've got other stuff here as well, writing to a file that overwrites existing content, appending to a file, checking if files exist, deleting files, renaming files, copying files, listing in files and directory. You notice I put all the imports that are necessary, tell it where the directory is. I'm very verbose. I'm not getting, you know, um, too, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, esoteric with how I'm naming my variables of things of that nature. I want them to be very uh, descriptive of what it is that I'm trying to marry them to. So that's the things that you want to do with inside of your cheat sheets. Make them easily readable, easily understandable, very little detail, and give a lot of example. Here I got some networking stuff. And again, if I ever need to do any of this stuff, I can just jump right in here and grab that and go. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to love it. <laughs> Trust me. I, I love this kind of stuff because it is so, 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 so useful. Can you go with AI? Can you ask AI chat GPT? Of course you can. 
Absolutely. But that those aren't your notes, right? Those are ChatGPT's notes. When you make your own notes, it's going to speak to you directly and it's going to help you process, synthesize, and understand that information a whole lot more than doing a copy pasta job on a chat GPT output, right? So it is a still important thing for us to, yes, use things like chat GPT as a tool, but don't lean so heavily on it that you don't know how to do anything, that you're completely without when it comes to how this actually works. You're just copying and pasting and hoping that it all works. And when it doesn't, what do you do? I don't know, right? So when you make your own notes like this and you put it in there, you put the details in, that's going to stick in the noodle a whole lot more than just grabbing something from the output of AI. Okay. So let's jump into glossary and let's take a look at a glossary. Glossary of terms are really great. Here I've got one uh, that I made of cybersecurity terms. And that way, again, I have those definitions in a way that really speaks to me and how I think and how I process. So like an access control mechanisms and policies that restrict access to systems or applications, or data based on user identity or role. To me, that really makes a lot of sense. So that's how I wrote that. You can write it the way you like to write. You put your definition, your spin on that, and you keep that glossary of terms. So as soon as you look at one of these things, it's going to make a whole lot of sense, at least to you. And then, of course, if you're reading it out to somebody, they can say, oh, what? what? I don't understand how you put that there. And you go, oh, that's a good point, right? As you share it with others, they might have things that you want to add or take away or change to make it more effective, more efficient to the purposes of, hey, I need a, a good working definition of APT, a stealthy threat actor, often a nation state that gains unauthorized access to a network and remains undetected for an extended amount of time, right? Or extended period is what I wrote. Cool. I get that. Does that make sense to other people? If not, let's revise. Let's refactor. Let's make a difference. Let's make it better, right? It's the $6 million glossary. We want it to be awesome. We have the technology. It's right here in front of us. All we have to do is use it, right? And then, of course, I, I've already mentioned code snippets, so I guess we won't go after that too hard. Just taking code snippets of things that you have worked on and maybe actually a pretty lengthy uh, bit of code for doing something specific. And then, hey, you know what? I can reuse that later. I can come back to it, grab that. That might work in another project I'm going for. So again, having that repository and something like a GitHub repo of those code snippets that can be reused, refactored and reused, just useful overall. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel when the wheel is doing pretty great right now. I just got to put it on my car, right? So there we go. That's that. I do want to give you another couple of tips. I always like to give you tips if I can. Organize. Got to keep that material organized and in a logical structure. Otherwise, it's scattergun and you can't understand. You can't find anything and it becomes a nightmare. So don't let your repository, don't let your um, your reference library become a, a mess. Don't keep a messy house. Keep it nice and clean. Keep it organized so that you can easily find what it is you're looking for. And of course, regularly review, update, ensure accuracy. I think I kind of harped on that already, but I want to make sure that I emphasize that point is that you want to be constantly reviewing and making sure that what you're putting in there still is relevant and works. And if it doesn't, it needs to be revised or maybe even taken out. Maybe it's no longer a thing. It's got to be removed. It just becomes legacy stuff. Maybe you make a legacy area where you keep and hold those things because they're not currently relevant to what's going on in today's day and age. So make sure that that is there. Accuracy is always an important part of that. And last but not least, share with your peers. Again, I think I've harped on this, but I cannot say it enough. Ask other people to look at it. What do you think of this? Does this make sense to you? How would you improve it? What would you add? What would you take away? How would you change? Not that you have to, but to hear feedback from people that you respect, that know how to do what you're doing, and maybe think, hey, you, you kind of missed the ball on that. It happens sometimes. Swallow the old pride down and just go, you are absolutely right. Let me go in. and I'm going I'm to make some changes on this. Thank you so much. Always have people uh, reviewing and so the collaboration is going to help enhance that to be even better. And that's what we're looking for. Well, there it is, kids. Thank you so much for joining me out this series. I hope you've enjoyed it yourself and that you learned a lot, that you take away something from this on the importance and usefulness 
of notes and documentation. That said, I'm sure I'm going to have plenty more to come. So keep an eye on the Anti-Siphon YouTube channel and other socials uh, for more content from this guy. Until next time, have a great day.